everybody, welcome to Let's Look at Tooth and Tail. This is a, a unique game. It's a controller-driven RTS, although you can totally play it on keyboard and mouse. Uh, you do not micromanage your units, or at least not to the same extent that you would in something like a StarCraft, StarCraft 2, etc, etc. I'm trying to think of more recent examples, but the RTS genre is kind of in a little bit of a weird place. In a dip, shall we say. I would never say that the genre is dead, but uh, it seems like there's been a lot less uh, recently that have really been uh, that major. So Tooth and Tail is kind of noteworthy in that, and in that it's designed to be a little bit more accessible. Not necessarily easier, but accessible. And I have to hedge my bets there because I've been getting my butt kicked. Uh, if I said it was easier, I would be lying to you. This is uh, from Pocket Watch Games, aka the developers of Monaco, What's Yours Is Mine. A very noteworthy, I think IGF Grand Nuovo uh, Grand Prize winner from the Independent Games Festival. A little bit of redundancy in there, but it, that was in 2011 or 2012. The game came out in 2012, I believe. It was like the co-op online bank robbing simulator. Um, this is the new game. It's a complete departure, uh, both in terms of, like, game style and also camera position. It's got a campaign, it's got multiplayer, it doesn't have multiplayer against bots, to the best of my knowledge, or oh, maybe it does. I, w I don't want to add a local player. I would like to add an AI. Ah, connect another controller. Okay, so no, well, wait, 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 before I go off on this, any chance we can get bots? Any chance we can get bots? Doesn't seem so. Um, it's really good, really interesting, and I can't wait to see people who are way better than me play it. Because I've played a little bit of the multiplayer, but I'm only ever going to play against friends. Because getting my butt kicked in an RTS just brings the salt out of me like a fighting game. So we're going to play a little bit of the story mode here, and we'll continue. Uh, I played about maybe, let's say, an hour and a half of the story mode, and... Um Maybe oh, we played an hour on the NLSS of the multiplayer. The multiplayer was rock solid, by the way, except for the fact that there was a bug um, that made it so you couldn't join your friends uh, from Steam. You all had to join a public match, but I assume that's in the process of being fixed. Um, by the way, that's important because unlike a lot of indie games, I check Steam charts. This thing has 700 concurrent players right now. That might seem a little on the low side, and you know, compared to Player Unknown's Battlegrounds, it is. But, that, for an indie game, that's actually like a sizable community, especially when you consider that it, it A, just came out, B, is $20, C, uh, only needs two to four people to fill up a lobby. But anyway, we're gonna replay an earlier mission of the campaign here, and I'll try to explain what the heck's going on. Hey, Nubs, we got a problem, and the Matriarch says you're the one to help. Some of the Matriarch's enforcers were out near Snickery, got caught by a KSR patrol. Quartermaster's, Quartermaster's got him working in labor camps now. We don't break him out soon, they'll get shipped off to the kitchens. Matriarch won't stand for that. I'm not gonna do this mission first because uh, it will kill me to do it first. But there is like, there's like a full story mode where you play as four different factions, kind of like they have political analogies, or they have analogous factions politically, I guess. Like, we're kind of playing as a leader of the people right now in like a communist revolution or something like that. But there's also, um, Earlier, we played as the quartermaster in the game, who is uh, kind of the leader of the merchant guild, you could say. Uh, and what I appreciate about this is that not every mission, and we'll start playing soon, I assure you, um, not every mission is just beat the enemy. Like, they have unique objectives, which is why I'm not going to do that mission first, because I think it's kind of not representative, if I remember correctly. Uh, surprised you'd show your face around here, Yellow Cloak. Civilized, do not hide, sinner. We may be in declination, but I take your teeth. I'll take your teeth soon enough. Then where's Archimedes, huh? I'd like to have a word or two with him. The High Missionary just left Soloa. He preaches to the nomads of Levakalu. He will not spare you, common folk. Your pitiful meat will rot in the sands with the rest of the sinners. The nomads are being converted to the civilized cause by Archimedes and his honeyed words as their food spoils. Oh, so we've got to destroy enemy gristmills, which is important, and then kill 40 enemies with Kasha. So this is going to be a little, like, a standard mission that we're going here. By the way, I would be remiss if, I, before we went further, I didn't talk about the fact that the music is gorgeous, uh, and it's an original soundtrack provided by Austin Wintori, who is the uh, composer for Journey as well, and has done other stuff that I can't remember now, but... Banner Saga, I think, was maybe another one. Um, and the art is really, really nice. Especially, it, it's kind of unique in this, like... It's like pixel art in 3D from an isometric viewpoint. It's got almost like a Super Nintendo 3 d sort of look to it. Like Super Nintendo plus depth, which is, I, I think, really nice. So what's unique about this? Um, 
And I'm gonna play a little bit while I discuss, otherwise I'm gonna fall way behind. What's unique about this is that it has all the trappings of an RTS, uh, an RTS, a genre I'm admittedly not that familiar with. Um, at least not since like 1998 when I stopped playing StarCraft, uh, because I got my butt kicked all the time. Um, but in like a very, very fast format. So our goal here is to kill all of these enemy grist mills, but we don't actually micro units. Um, the way that we, uh, do things is all handled via either passive control or via our player character here who I'm running around with. So now we have some units. Uh, I'm using the controller. I can use right trigger to rally units around me and I can also tell them what to attack but I'm gonna wait to do so until we get some more units built here. So uh, I, using the right stick here, I can select a unit and I can build a warren which is basically a barracks. Um, so it, but killing the enemy, by the way, just causes them to respawn. But um, it's basically a barracks that produces units. So I produce three of these squirrels now, and using right trigger, I can have them come around. Um, building a warren costs food, and building units from the warren costs food, but it happens automatically. The food is generated by these farms that we have here, so I'm going to continue to build some of those to make sure our resources are handled properly. You can also select uh, individual units. Like, for example, it's not a really good example right here. Please stop attacking my farmers. Um, by... Uh, Mousing over, like, for example, these artillery uh, freight union right here, I, and then using left trigger, I can control just them. So I'm holding the button right now, and these dudes are like, we can't rally because we got nobody to rally. But I can rally all the squirrels, for example. So our goal here is to kill all of the enemy grist mills. I'm just going to put down, like, another uh, barracks here. Um... The grist mill is essentially a zone of control that has uh, farms around it. There's eight farms around it, and uh, the farms actually go fallow, which means they stop producing resources within like five to ten minutes. So you do want to keep a rush on things. Games are intended to take, uh, you know, maybe ten to fifteen minutes to complete. So it's definitely on the shorter side for uh, the experience of an RTS. So I'm just going to wait. You can see like the... Freight Union Circle is filling up right here on the on the bottom of the screen. I'm gonna wait until that fills up and we get both of the units that we're able to get as a result of our um, as a result of having this barracks. And then we're gonna take our army and go out and try to kill some uh, some enemy grist mills using finer control. We can also build uh, legendary units, like for example, Kasha Farmhand. It costs us 180 to build the barracks and then takes some time to build Kasha, but then usually she'll have like an extremely uh, or they, whatever the legendary unit is, I should say, will have an extremely high amount of HP. You know, they'll be stronger, they'll be faster, they'll be tankier, etc., etc. Um, so, you know, we have two more units under construction right now. We might as well have them start to come here. But first, I am going to claim another uh, another grist mill for myself, just so we can expand. Because, again, expansion is important here as well. Uh, and I think that was a relatively smart idea, because we've actually lost some of our army in the process. Uh, mostly, I'm not gonna try to sell it too hard, but mostly because I've been talking. <laughs> ah, and the, the farmers are being attacked, dude. Okay, first off, build two farms here, and then come back up. Build one more farm here, maybe even another farm right there. Okay, so we got our full army here. Let's go out here. Um, when we're away from our zone of control, due to the unique conditions of this mission, we actually, oh, let's go destroy their barracks. So again, I can control them with like right trigger here, for example. Um, we take damage when we're outside of our own zone of control because the sand is hot. But that's just a unique parameter for this story mission. So we uh, probably want to get back, if possible, before the sand gets so hot that it causes us to die. Uh, and our army has been pretty much decimated by that garbage attack. So uh, I, I honestly think we're like pretty far behind the eight ball here. And we're, we're losing our farmers in the process. So I'm going to actually return to the Warrens whoops, and and restart this and, and try to play with a little bit more urgency in my pace so we can uh, actually show off a, a little bit more of a traditional loop here if that makes sense. So first things first, let's scout. We know that there's definitely uh, enemies over there so we'll focus on conquering that grist mill first and uh, I think your first choice is uh, very valuable. You know, you could get another grist mill. I don't think that's a great move. Or you can build a Warren uh, for your cheap units. Or you can build a farm. So of those three options, it's, it's kind of like your first choice in like Civ 4, right? Or, you know, any civilization, I suppose, uh, for what you're going to build. So I usually start by building units first, so I have something to protect my farmers. It's kind of like some game theory if I'm getting a little bit, you know, ad admittedly over my intellectual depth. Um... Because if your enemy builds units and you build a farm, you didn't really build a farm. That farm is, it, it belongs to the grave, right? Uh, and I, I tend to play a little bit more aggressively as well because I really think the game is weighted towards aggression. By the way, if you don't give them a focus, they'll just attack whatever's close. Uh, if, if you 
the game is weighted, I think, a little bit towards aggression because if you stall too long, uh, you end up in a situation where your farms go fallow and you can just, like, completely end up being screwed because you're out of resources. So, this time we kind of did, like, a pseudo-zergling rush here and we've got, uh, a couple of squirrels that we can th throw in here that will probably die on the hot sand. So let's wait until we get a, a couple of more here and I'll build a farm in the process. You can destroy your enemy's economy, of course, by, by just taking out their farms. By the way, what's unique as well is that um, there's not just like one cheap unit. Like not everybody's rocking squirrels. Um, different story uh, factions rock uh, different units at each tier and there's four tiers. Um, as well as the, the unique legendaries and, and some base defenses as well. Um, so th there's a lot of variety there. And in multiplayer, you can choose your roster almost as if it was like a tower defense game. So you can mix and match, you know, as you see fit. So I'm going to build two more farms here just to keep my economy going. I, I can't really afford to attack the grist mill that much because the squirrels are going to die on the, on the hot sand out here. So what we might want to do, I think we're still going to manage to get the kill, but oh, maybe not actually. What we might want to do is um, is expand a little bit and then maybe build like a higher tier of units because we, we kind of decimated their first grist mill, but we didn't do too much after that. So I think, you know, we were keeping up the harass and that's good. So I played this uh, online. The online mode is really cool in my opinion. Uh, I, I mostly got my butt kicked and Austin mostly. Oh, there's a visual indicator of, of the farm. So you can see those ones are already like half dead. Um, Austin mostly kicked our butts, and we all had, like, very different speeds at which we learned. I think Rob's got some, you know, StarCraft in his DNA as well. Um, as well as maybe some loyalty and some royalty, as I've been told. Let's, uh, let's build another farm down here and just keep our resource game going up. But uh, that is, I think, really where the game shines. I kind of wish they had bots, because I am, like, if, if we go play online right now, I'm going to get destroyed. So um, I think it's, it's wise, perhaps, for me to... Uh, not rock the boat too much on that. Uh, and and maybe focus on my strength, which is at least beating the AI in a mission that I've already played once. Okay, destroy the farm. And then we probably got this grist mill because of our artillery that actually don't end. You know what? Okay, let, let's try to be even smarter because we got... Hey, first off. Yeah, no, no, no. Get these spearmen down here. Get these spearmen down here. They're killing my farmers. Okay, we made it out there, but that was a problem. Um, no, we have not made it out here. Um, what I was thinking is we can actually be smart and select just our uh, our artillery, and there we go. We've rallied our artillery to our cause here, and now they can destroy the enemy grist mill without actually being on enemy territory. So that's a, an example of where like the micro can be important if you uh, if you use it properly, which I think it's certainly uh, plausible that I have not. Thank God my farmers like defended themselves a little bit here. So again, the goal is to destroy um, all enemy grist mills. So we probably got some more over here. We might want to claim some more in the process as well. Um, just so we're still uh, moving. You know, we, we haven't really done a very good job of exploring the map. Mostly because I, I'm de-incentivized to explore the map. Uh, okay, so we got another base up there. Because the, the sand hurts me. Although not that much. Okay, our food is spoiling because we've got too much of it. Which is what that sound has been. So I built the, uh, the legendary unit here. The sniper and... Uh, I'm interested to see how that works out because I don't even know if I built it last time. Let's quickly build a couple of farms here. You might be wondering, you know, like, why expand? Well, the reason you, you expand beyond, like, the hot sand, which is not on every map, is uh, because in this case, uh, we... Thank you. Um, we uh, our, our farms are almost out on our original base, so we probably could have beaten the enemy by now if we were better and, and more efficient with our choices, for example. Um, let's split up our defense just so we got a little bit kind of everywhere. Um, yeah, those farms are going fallow. We could even uh, sell some of these units if we want, by the way, to get more food to feed our army. But um, we, uh, you, you always want to keep expanding because you're running out of resources always. It's like in StarCraft, you know, you can mine uh, Vespian gas. You can mine crystal uh, fast enough that it, it will... Uh, eventually be completely exhausted it's exactly the same thing here except it happens at a much more accelerated pace so you always want to make sure that you're at least you have an eye towards expansion because otherwise you're just gonna starve yourself accidentally by being out of resources so um if you guys could just no, no no get off the sand please i'd just like to take my artillery out here see if we can get some vision of this area that's dusting them pretty well. I just feel like we don't want to hurt any units unnecessarily. And then we'll come back within our base where I think we can uh, 
Can I get another legendary? You can. So you can see I've got that legendary following us around now. Um, let's even like build another farm, just so we're not wasting our resources unnecessarily. And I'll build some engineers as well. The engineers are just really good at knocking down structures. All right, so let's get everybody out here. And we're just going to do like a massive attack here. So we're coming out here. We destroyed their, their turret. We destroyed this. The squirrels aren't offering too much of a threat at this point. Let's head back. Just get a little heal back here. So we just don't want all of our units to die. You can get medic units, by the way, but we're not going to see any uh, over the course of uh, of this, uh, at least this first encounter that we're having here. All right, so let's just come up here. We could kill the farmers, but I'd much rather just destroy the... Well, in, actually, instead of it, it, destroying the grist mill, we should probably destroy like this uh, warren up here. And you can see our army size like start to dwindle down there at the bottom, but that's okay. As long as we're using it productively, I'm not that mad. We have more food coming in. Okay, everybody, see if you can get back to base without dying on the hot sand. They are definitely going to die on the hot sand, but you know what? That's all right. We got more units being constructed right now because of our farms regardless. We might want to sell some of this stuff, though. Like, for example, the squirrels, they're kind of stinky right now, so get rid of those. We get a little bit more meat in the process, and... Um, that's important because, again, this grist mail is, like, absolutely dusted. We can't even claim this one because we, we've queued a farm, I think. So, um, let's just wait for our army to rebuild itself somewhat, and then we'll go for that final grist mill. And that should be the end of this mission. And I, I just want to point out, like, right off the bat, I am bad at RTS. My brain, uh, I'm not going to say that my brain is, like, broken with respect to it, but, like, I don't have the, the learned skill in RTS that a lot of people have from playing a bunch of StarCraft, Command & Conquer, Warcraft, etc., etc. I played as a kid, but it was always only campaigning against friends, which, you know, you can see me repeating the, those same mistakes now. But, uh, so if you're watching this and you're going, this guy has no idea what he's doing, you're absolutely correct. You're, like, more correct than you could even conceivably understand. Um, so I'm just taking all of my uh, units over here. We're taking them to the edge of the sand and occasionally, apparently, over the sand, but that's it's fine, I suppose. We'll destroy their barracks so they can't create any more units, and then after that, we'll go straight for their grist mill, which will probably end the game. It did not end the game. There is one more left somewhere. So as, as far as I'm concerned, go nuts. You know, destroy another barracks or two. I know they're called warrens, but, like, are they? Come on. You're all so close to dying on the sand. We still... There's another base somewhere. Okay, come on back then. Anyone who can live for more than one attack is, like, good in my eyes. Um, I don't know why we don't have workers here. They must have been killed, perhaps? Maybe we need more meat to create them? I'm not sure. I mean, we, we could have suffered a raid, like, while we were gone. So we'll just wait for, like, one more... Uh, Kind of like replenishment of our armies. And you know what? I think we got like too many artillery. We could probably afford to like scrap those ferrets and go for some more, uh, maybe like melee units. Just a little bit more tanky, which is important perhaps on a map like this where, uh, where we've got, uh, I don't know what happened. I mean, it, it broke perhaps. It got damaged to the point where it broke, I guess. Or was destroyed is probably the collective term for that. Okay, so we've taken way too much time here. We failed our heroic objective already. The heroic objective is just, um, we being attacked? It's just like a super difficult objective or a more difficult objective at least. And, um, the idea there is if you complete that, you get another, you know, feather in your cap, I suppose. So this is one example of the, uh, of the campaign being done here. I, I can't say, say enough about the presentation of the game, for real. Um, now that we finished one one level there and you kind of understand what's going on, let's talk a little bit about potential negatives. Uh, I, for one, although the campaign is cool in that it's not just AI skirmishing over and over and if you win they shoehorn some story in, some of the missions I found a little confusing. Um, like this one that I opted not to do because I think it would show it in not an amazing light is like you start with just a couple of units and then you have to gradually free more and more from prisons as you play. Um, 
it, I found it a little annoying because there is 15 pods and you have to rescue every single one of them. So I was like, it had a magnifying glass, basically, figuratively speaking, up to my monitor. Like, where is that last pod that I missed? And it didn't take an hour. You know, it took like 10 minutes, but it was 10 minutes of walking around being like, I need to find the victory condition for this level because there's no way they can stop me. I've got a huge army. All I need to do is like keep walking around until I find like the three by three block where the prisoners actually are. So it doesn't always work. Uh, that well, but I do applaud them for making the effort to make all of the the levels unique um, The other thing is the game uh, from my limited experience doesn't seem to resonate with everybody a lot of people uh, that play it are just like At least at first they're like I really wish I could just control all of my units individually instead of having to walk around in this it like people it, Let's just be honest. It was Nick was like uh, you know, it seems like this is just a needless gimmick. I disagree with him, but there's a chance that you might fall on the same uh, page that he does. Uh, and then beyond that, I don't think the campaign is particularly long. I mean, I'm roughly halfway through it. I think this last mission that I have here is the last mission for the common folk, which would put me halfway through the, the campaign at maybe an hour and a half, two hours. Uh, so definitely it's the kind of game you want to... Uh, play the multiplayer. Now, I mean, I'll, I'll brave the multiplayer here. I'll probably lose in like 10 seconds, so... Um, Win games to earn stars, earn five stars to rank up. First rank cannot lose stars. Max out your rank to compete for highest win streak. Win streak, I should say. Um, friends leaderboard? We got anybody on the friends leaderboard? No, it's just hourly. Okay. Um, let's let's play and queue up here. Uh, the good news is, and I, again, I said this, there's actually a surprisingly robust community of, and I hope that this man cannot hear me right off the bat here. There's a surprisingly robust community right now, and I hope that it continues that way. You can also play uh, against friends, of course, which I think is the way that I prefer it uh, so far. So I'm, I'm on the right here. I'm going to play as Bellified versus Parker Man Prime. It doesn't matter which leader you take. And then let's take, like, a diverse set for our, um, for our units here. So I'll take uh, Nomads of the North, which are, like, a... a Pseudo range, like mid range, mid tanky unit. The squirrels are like higher range, I think, and maybe even higher damage, but much less HP. And I'll take uh, wing demons who can fly, so they can shoot down any of his flying units. Uh, I'll take bullet hives, which are basically just turrets. I got three left, huh? I'll take um, inmate number four three eight. I'll take the Volunteers, which are Medics, and I'll take the Glorious AFB. I don't know if this is a good setup, but we're going to do it anyway. Um, I think it's really encouraging for the game uh, that we were able to find a match in, like, almost no time whatsoever. By the way, I haven't talked about the burrowing mechanic, but I'll have a really good opportunity to do so here uh, in just a little bit. First things first, got a scout. We want to burrow home, which is basically just a teleport we can do if we're not under attack. And that'll allow us to build a warren uh, right off the bat so we can get some units. The maps are procedurally generated as well, which is another thing that kind of strikes me as a little bit of a negative, to be honest, because I have had some maps... Okay, so we found our, our dude there. I'm not going to say that the maps are um, unfair, because I don't think that that's true. Uh, I, I don't, I'm not sure if they come out to be symmetrical, but... Uh, the, what I have had is is maps that are just surrounded by rock and are like really difficult to find paths through, which is especially annoying when you're when you're trying to take all your units to to some place in particular, you know. Um, so let's let's queue up another farm here, and then we'll wait till we get three nomads of the north, and then we'll take those all with us here. Being able to queue up a farm means that we can uh, have it build while we're gone, which you can't do with Warren. So I just want to see if this guy's got anything on the go right now. It, it seems like he's just going like full farm build, so I'll just kill one of his farms, and then he killed two of my units. So I don't know. We might have had a, a relatively uh, even trade there. Oh, we got two back. Oh no, one of them was built at our base. That's fine. All right, so we're gonna uh, work on getting ourselves uh, expanded a little bit. I don't know if we need to expand too far, but we definitely want to have access to more resources. So um, I think we might as well. Like, get these farms queued up. I don't even know if we want that farm queued up right there. And then get working on building some defenses. This can serve as, like, kind of a forward base for us now that we've uh, gotten a little further here. So the, the bullet hives cost 60, and we should be able to place them anywhere. Maybe we can't place them on stone? I'm not sure. Um, but yeah, let's place a bullet hive right there. Queue up a farm. So the bullet hive is just going to serve as, like, a, a defensive mechanism, basically. The other alternative is that maybe 
we can't place the bullet hive because we have not uh we, or maybe I'm, I just can't see the icon, actually. And we'll leave our units over there at the Bullet Hive for now. Queue up a farm, but get ready to build some more units once that farm is actually built. So we got two Bullet Hives up. I really want to amp up my, uh, like my farm construction, because I want to make one of these legendary units pretty quickly and then go for a, uh, go for a, an assault. Because, you know, this game's pretty new. There's a small chance that I might be going up against somebody who's not that experienced. Oh, never mind. Okay, what has this boy done? Um, I'm a little frightened. Uh, he has bullet hives. Maybe we'll make some wing demons. Bullet hives can kill wing demons, but, uh, maybe, maybe it's not that bad for us. I think we need more units, though, because we saw squirrels amassing on our, uh, on our kind of, like, northeastern front here. So get, get some more warrens built as soon as possible. We might even want to, like, spam units instead of worrying about legendaries. And I'm trying to put these barracks, like, back in the back corner so that we're uh, a little bit on the safer side there from being attacked and you know I honestly I'm gonna put down like another bullet hive here and who knows the other thing is that this dude might be expanding like crazy right now so I'm preoccupied with defense and and he's going you know buck wild so I kinda feel like I'm gonna claim another grist mill here even though we could build a farm just so we've kinda got like another base we can go to if things hit the fan. So he's got his squirrels behind his lines there. Um, we could potentially do like a flanking attack with our birds uh, if, if we really wanted to get fancy. I don't really want to get fancy because I don't trust myself to succeed at that. But we, we got quite the army going up here. It's like Bob. Bob who was building an army. The other thing we could do is... Um, just give me my birds for now. I know we've only got two. I'm not sure if those flamethrower units can actually hit these. I'm also not sure if these things can attack at all. <laughs> they might just be medic. No, no, they have a machine gun. You don't need a medic with a machine gun. Okay, so we got lots of good stuff there. We know he's probably got a grist mill right here. Okay, we got it. We got to go. We got to go. Focus on these units right here. He's got the same units that I did. Okay, so he's got he's got bullet hives. We're gonna have some problems here. He, he's beaten our army, but now we've got bullet hives that might be able to push him back a little bit here. My dude is microwing, and that means that we are so highly dusted. I don't even want to talk about it. So come back here. We're gonna fall back a little bit. Take the grist mill. See if I care. It's a pretty big opportunity cost. I'm also getting kind of like a little bit of a lag spike right now, which I'm not. I'm saying it because it's the last look at. You know, we take a little bit more of a critical eye. I'm not saying it because. Oh, like the lag spike cost me. That's very far from the truth here. Okay, so he's got he's got some good units there. Let's fall back. We already lost the grist mill. You know, we don't have to to worry about that that much. We got our legendary unit being constructed right now, though. Also, think um, if we could find a place to sneak in some uh, medics, that would be positive. That's not what I want to build there. Sorry, get rid of that. Build some medics. You know, we got some strong units. We want to make sure we're protecting them. So he's just bombarding me right now. We got we got to find a way to stop him. So let's get in there. Focus on taking out the artillery first. Okay, I think that went relatively well, actually. I just want to wait until like our first medics get constructed so that we can actually have a chance to maybe hold them back here. And we'll build another little bit of that. I think once our uh, nomads die, we might just want to get rid of them for a while. So here's here come the medics here. Um, we might just want to get rid of them, like sell them so that we have the food for something else. Because our farms are getting pretty low here. So let's build two more farms quickly. I think it's time for us to go on the offensive, to be honest with you. Which is possibly just very, very wrong. Get in here, dust up the barracks. Big opportunity cost on that. Fall back. <laughs> I don't think that went particularly well. And I can't help but notice that I feel mighty hemmed in in my base right now. Especially with our farms going fallow, so... I'm pretty sure that I am being, uh, I am being torn up here by a, a better player. And that's fine, I think it was actually a pretty representative, uh, example of, of what I expect to happen to me, uh, on the regular here in, uh, in Tooth and Tail. Which is why I'm predominantly gonna play with friends. It's like a fighting game, you know? Um, and that's why I appreciate that there's a single player, cause, uh, it, it kind of makes it a little bit more accessible for someone who doesn't have that, uh, that experience in, in RTS to, to play. To have a campaign mode that kind of teaches you the basics, but still gonna get my butt kicked online, I think. So I'm gonna basically I'm gonna try to one last ditch effort here, and uh, if you destroy me, so be it. 
All I ask is that you you finish quickly and destroy my grist mill. I also know that the game has been in open beta for a while. Or, uh, I'm not sure if it's open beta, but it's been beta tested for a while. So it is conceivable that uh, other people might have a lot of experience. Although I think maybe the more reasonable explanation right now is that I'm just bad and probably should not be playing ranked. But either way, uh, good game to you. Something Prime. Postman Prime? I forgot your name. Parker Man Prime. There was a brief window when my army value was higher. And there was a very brief window where my income was higher. But I think, you know, I got beat by a better man there. Um, either way, this is Tooth and Tail. And I hope I did a reasonable job of uh, showing off what is not necessarily an easy kind of game to show off. It's 20 bucks. The presentation definitely fits the price point. Graphics, sound... UI, really, really nice, really slick. It's got a full-fledged story mode. It might not be particularly long. And then it has a community of people that are playing it online as well. So if you find yourself uh, feeling the itch, especially if you're maybe a little bit more of an armchair RTS player like myself, you might find Tooth & Tail interesting. I know I have. Uh, otherwise, be aware, it's an RTS. You know, it's got RTS trappings despite the fact that it looks like kind of a distilled version of it. For now, though, thanks for watching. Peep the game on Steam if you're interested. I will put a link in the video description below. But for now, thanks for watching. I hope you've enjoyed the episode. If you did, click the like button. It helps out a great deal. And of course, subscribe if you want to see more in the future. For now, though, thanks for watching. And I'll see you next time.